thank you, Lord. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Oh, we magnify you, Father. We give you glory, Father. Oh, you're worthy, Father. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy of our praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I lift my voice to worship. Because they really give us enlightenment of what the word really says. If we don't really understand the words, then it, we, don't have, we don't have good understanding of the Bible. But Bible words are so important. And that's why the Lord has, over the years, he's revealed a lot of Bible words to me. And I've, they've always confirmed up with the word of God, with the Greek and Hebrew text. So, so fortunately, I learned how to study scripture when I was in the Bible college. And so I can learn, I can study these things out. And fortunately, with God's direction, we can see things we've never seen before. God wants to open our eyes. We, through the Holy Ghost, we have enlightenment. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He will teach us all things. The Bible says the things of God are spiritually discerned. The, the natural man cannot know the things of God, but we have the Spirit of Christ in us. We have the Holy Ghost in us to lead us, to guide us, yes. to direct us, to open our eyes so we can see. Yes, right. thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. And the Lord's gave you guys me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So the Lord's taught me, and I get to teach you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, freely you have received, freely give. He told his disciples, freely you have received. Free to give. So I free to give out everything God gives me. Thank you. It's just that it's taken me a long time to get it all that I've got. And so yeah, I've got to get it. I've got to tell you over and over and over to get into you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Into what God's given me. Because it's taken me years and years to get these things into me. So I've got to, I've got to get it into you. Yes. Lord. You know, if you hear something over and over. Have you ever heard, like, commercials on the radio? Uh-huh. 
Come on. Call 321-2277. Anytime, night or day, right? <laughs> I mean, those they just say those things over and over and they get in you. Come on, brother. They get in you. Yeah. So that's why we, we speak the word together. That's why I get you saying these things. And we hear these things, and you hear them over and over. Finally, you get them. Finally, I get it. Amen. Finally, you get it. The more you get, the more enlightenment you get, the more you'll understand everything in the Bible together. Amen. I mean, if it gets clearer and clearer all the way through, God never, ever has changed. God has always been a merciful and gracious Amen. God. God has desired, He has never desired to destroy mankind. He's always desired to save them, to deliver them, to set them free. But they have to truly repent. Yes. And that's never changed. It's always been that way. Yes. God's never willing that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes, thank you, Lord. He's always been like that. Jonah knew Jonah was a prophet of God. And he knew the nature of God. God's nature has never, ever changed. He's the same yesterday, and he'll be the same today, and he will be the same tomorrow. He never, ever has changed. He never, ever will change. The Bible says the old covenant is good for our admonition so we can know how God works. And it gives, like the children of Israel as an example, how that they came, they were delivered out of Egypt, out of their bondage, and then they went back to all the sinning and everything, and God's judgment came upon them. If we choose to go back into sin, then we're walking away from God. I mean, that's just the way it's always been. It never has changed. It never will change. God's not going to be more gracious to us because we're in the new covenant as he was then in the old covenant. He's always been merciful. The only advantage we have now under the new covenant is now we actually have Christ who comes and lives inside of us. The spirit of Christ is actually comes and abides in us. We are children of God. We are heirs of God and joint heirs of Jesus yes, Christ. So we have yes. a stronger covenant and a better covenant. Yes, we do. Now, Thank you, Lord. now we actually can do all the things that the old covenant commands us to do. And we're talking Lord. about the righteous requirements Hallelujah. of the law. We're not talking about the civil ceremonial things. They really have nothing to do with true righteousness. We're not talking about what kind of food you eat. We're talking about the life you live. That's the right. walk of love Amen. that you walk in God, in Christ. Yes. We need to really understand that Jesus Christ is in us, in our spirit. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, I would that you all, that you be sanctified, holy, spirit, soul, and body. We're a three-part being, a spirit, a soul, and a body. Three parts, a yes. spirit, you, and a soul, yes. and a body. And the, the end in between those three words Link them all together into one. That and links them all together into one. I've always known that, that we're a three-part being, and, that is, and the Lord's always told me, you're one person. You're not three-part. You're one person. Just like there's God is three parts, but one God. Spirit, Father, and, and Word in them. Jesus Christ. Word. The Word. We're a three-part being. We're made in the image and likeness of God. We're spirit, soul, and body. But we are one person. The Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. You think that's ever changed? No, it's never changed. You see, we are a living soul. We are, we're all living souls if we're alive in Christ. We're either a living soul or we're a dead soul. If Christ is in us, we're a living soul. If Christ is not in us, we're a dead soul. If you choose to walk after the flesh, you will die. But if you through the Spirit will mortify or put to death the deeds of the body, then you'll live. Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right. Amen. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Really, the only one I can really talk about, even is me. Because I have a choice to walk after the Spirit or walk after the flesh. I have a choice to walk in the light or walk in darkness. That's right. And if I would choose to walk in darkness, how great is that darkness? I need to walk after the Spirit, things of the Spirit. If I will walk after the things of the Spirit, God will get me where I need to go. Amen. Yes. I, I know that I'll have confidence on the day of Christ's appearing. I'll have confidence that I'm living a holy, righteous life before Him with His help. Without Him, I can do nothing. Without Jesus, I can do nothing. That's what He tells us in John chapter 15. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So, but with Him... We can do all things. Amen. Amen. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. How many found that out? 
I thought, I thought maybe when I got born again, I wouldn't have any problems anymore. You know what? The devil is after you still. Whether you're, whether you're saved or not, the devil wants to destroy all of mankind. The thief cometh not before to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The lion, they, they're out to kill people. You know, lions will kill people. The devil's like that. He wants to kill everybody. <coughs> yeah, I mean, you're not a special target when you get to be a Christian. I mean, he, he's after you, but he's after you whether you're a Christian or whether you're not. He wants to take you out. But God wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. He gave us authority over all the powers of Satan, over all the powers of the devil, so that nothing could hurt us from the devil. And so we have to stand in faith in the authority we've been given by God, by Jesus Christ. We have to stand in that and exercise our faith in, in those things. If we'll learn to do that, we can live a victorious life every day. I used to have a lot of fear problems in my life. And, and uh, I, look, I, had, I knew a scripture that said, God's not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I knew that scripture. So, so when fear come against me, I would always say that. I, I had a terrible fear of dogs. Like if I was down in the neighborhood, like the dogs would just terrify me when a dog comes <laughs> chasing me or something. My wife still, still has kind of a fear of dogs like that. But I got that crucified in me. In me. I, that I have no fear of dogs. I used to have a terrible fear of spiders. Terrible. It was a phobia. But I got that crucified in me. Now I enjoy like smashing spiders with my bare hands. I, I actually get pleasure out of doing that because I was so terrified of them before that I couldn't touch them. Now, now I, I enjoy doing that because there is no fear. Now, you may think, well, and you know, I've, I've smashed them like ground recluses. I found out, you know, uh, probably not a good idea to do that. But. <laughs> now I can, like to use a pull cue on those, but you got to get real close to them to see if they really are with that. He says he stomps with his foot, right? But if they're on the wall, you can't do that, you know. You can't, my foot won't reach up on the wall. Anyhow, anyhow, but all these things, that all these strongholds in our lives, we can, we can bring them under control of the Word of God. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. We get knowledge of God up here and in here. We need to get the Word of God so big in us and be saying what the Word of God says in every circumstance that there's nothing that can stand against the Word of God. The Bible says God's Word is living and active and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The Lord's told me that every one of His words has enough power in it to accomplish everything he sent it to do. The Bible says that God's word is not returning to him void, but it will accomplish what he sent it to do. So has his word, his word returns? By us speaking his word to him. Amen. By us saying, God, you said. God, you said. God, you said. Thank you, Lord. In every circumstance. And you know what? We can walk in victorious life. Amen. We can be overcomers. We can do all things that we need to do in Christ. Because he's in us, strengthening us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we need to understand these things. Turn with me to, uh, well, glory. Turn with me, to, I guess I'm going to hit. I guess I'm going to hit saved first. Now, I wrote a book on grace. You can always get that out there. But God gave me a, a revelation on saved. Save is a Greek word, sozo. It's translated save, then it's translated saved. And salvation comes from that root, root, root word, sozo. And it means, and it also means something that the Lord told me. And so the Lord spoke to me and he said, save means deliver. Saved means delivered. Salvation is deliverance. And Jesus is the Savior, the Savior is the deliverer. So Jesus came to deliver us from sin. 
Jesus came to break the power of sin in our life. He came to set us free and to make us whole. And we see this all through the Bible. So what's, what they've done is like the strong concordance people. They went through all the Bible where this word's used, and they saw in areas that it was used, and so they put all these different meanings. Like they'll say, they'll say rescued, they'll say, they'll say delivered, they'll say healed, because it's used in all these areas. But the truth is, it just means delivered, but it's delivered in all those areas that it's talking about. Jesus came to deliver us from sin, sickness, poverty, the whole works. He came to set us free. He came to deliver us from fear. But salvation includes all that. Everything that Christ came to break the power of in our life, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And everything that's a work of the devil, Jesus came to set us free from. Come on. Jesus told some Jews that believed in him, he told them, if you continue in my word, now they, had believed, they were believers. They had believed in Jesus, the Bible says. And he said, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Thank and they told him, oh, we've never been in bondage to any man. How sayest thou that you shall be free? And he said, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. That's what he told them. And so he told them, so the Son has come to set you free so that you might be free indeed. So why did Jesus come? He came to set people free from sin. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6, the last verse says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so Jesus came to break the power of sin in our lives. The very first place that sozo is used in the Bible, in the New Testament, it's a Greek word. And so in the New Testament, the very first place it's used is when the angel of the Lord appeared to appeared to uh, Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus. And he told him, Be not afraid to take unto thee Mary for thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And ye shall name his name Jesus, for he shall sozo save his people from their sins. Jesus came to destroy the power of sin in people's lives. He came to set us free. He came to make us whole. He made these provisions. But we have to, open the, we have to walk in these things by faith. James says that, James says, instead of just being hearers of the word, you need to be doers of the word. Because if you're just a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, it's not going to accomplish anything in your life. Right. Be not hearers, but doers of the word. Be not hearers only. We've got to hear the word. Faith comes when we hear the word. But we've still got to act on that faith. He said, faith without works is dead, being alone. you got to, you got to do something. One day... Paul was preaching the gospel. Of course, we know the gospel is a full gospel. It includes healing, it includes deliverance, it includes people being set free and made whole, but it includes healing too. And he was preaching the gospel. And the Bible says he perceived, I believe this was just a gift of the Holy Ghost, just giving him a word of knowledge that this man had faith to be healed. I mean, he's a lame guy. He perceived the man had faith to be healed. He had to do it by the Holy Ghost. She said, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. And when they got doing good, healing all that was oppressed in the devil, for God was with him. And Paul had the same Holy Ghost that we have today. It's the same Holy Ghost that anoints us just like it anointed Jesus, just like it anointed Paul, just like it anointed those guys in the early church. We have the same anointing that Jesus Christ did. We have the same dunamis power that's available to us to walk in as a God leads us and guides us and directs us. That's why it's important to be led by the Spirit of God, to be in a place where you're sensitive to the voice of the Spirit on a daily basis. When you get into an emergency, there's no time to, to get right, to get all things straight with God. We need to stay straight with God all the time. We need to be sensitive to the voice of God all the time. That's why the Bible says we should pray all the time without ceasing. We should be praying, we should pray, praying in the Holy Ghost. We should be building ourselves up in the most holy faith, praying yes. in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's praying in tongues. Thank we should you. be sensitive. We should be praying and meditating on the Word day and night. We should be getting the Word of God big in us all the time. I had a guy tell me, well, I don't have time to do that. Well, you, everybody's got the same amount of time. I've got the same amount of time as you've got. I was driving a semi-truck for full time for 70 to 80 hours a week. 
I had the same amount of time I got now. But even while I was doing that, I was doing that, I was meditating on the Word and praying in the Holy Ghost and getting revelation from God. I'm still this still I'm waking up, up early in the morning now. I'm getting older. Found out I don't need as much sleep I get older. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got more time to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So saved means saved does not mean born again. I mean, we, we talk about being born again. Saved does not mean born again. Born again happens when the Spirit of Christ, when we surrender our life to Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ is joined to our spirit. And his life becomes our life. Amen. Then we have eternal life. It's only through faith in Jesus Christ that we receive him and make him Lord of our life. Amen. Through true repentance of our heart. Thank you, and God Lord. knows our heart. And when we do that, we are set free. We are made of Jesus comes into us and makes his abode in us. We're, we're in him and he's in us. New We're the branch Amen. and he's the vine. Yes, right? Lord. We enter into him and he enters into us. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. And we stay in him by producing fruit, by walking in the spirit. And doing what the Holy Ghost leads and guides us and directs us to do. And God's never going to lead you to do a sin thing. He's going to lead you to holiness and righteousness and purity. He's going to purify you. Let him cut away the, the old things in your life. Let him purge you so that you can bear more and more and more fruit. Amen. Grow up more and more and more like Jesus. Till Christ be formed in you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what God wants. Thank you, Lord. He wants, God, he wants us to, to walk in wholeness, to walk in purity. The Bible says without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Amen. And we, we, are, we are holy through the word. But we've got to walk in these things. We've got to keep walking in these things. I know it, it's progression. It takes time. It took a, a long time for me to get fear crucified in my life. It took a long time. It took years and years and years. But I finally got it crucified in my life. A lot of these things takes a long time. The Apostle Paul even said, I don't say that I've attained to the resurrection. He said, but the one thing I do do, I forget those things which are behind, and I press forward to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus that set before me. You see, God has pushed for us to be submitted to God to a place where Christ becomes formed in us. God gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers, to perfect the saints to do the work of the ministry, till we all come into the unity of the faith and to the full knowledge of, of the Son of God and to the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ himself. God did that. He gave, he gave you guys, people like me, so that we can give you what he gives us. So that you can grow up into Christ. Like we're striving to do on a daily basis. So that you can be imitators of us as we, as we imitate Christ. Thank God. Thank God. It's all about God. So saved means delivered. So, so saved means delivered. And we talked about it behind I'll talk about grace. Now, I've got the book out there. You can read it. But, but I explained a lot more in the, in the book than what I can explain right now because that's a like a whole hundred page book. Mm -hmm. But I can explain somewhat to you right now. Grace is a word that describes all those things that God has already freely given us. It's freely given. Say freely given. Freely given. Grace is freely given by God. Grace is freely given by God. And God told me the easiest way for me to understand. I, I need to be, I need to understand in a simple way. And so the Lord kind of explains to me in a simple way because, you know, if you guys were here Sunday night, you know that I wasn't all there, all that, you know, when I started out. And so God had to increase my intellect. And, and I still understand that it's him and not me. Come on, brother. And so he's got somebody he can work with with me because I'm submitted to him. And so if we'll be submitted to God, then he's got somebody he can work with. If we'll be humble before God, then he's got somebody he can work with. If we know that we're not much, but he's everything, then it's easy to submit to God. Don't ever think, oh, look, I did this. No, you didn't do anything. God did it. Amen. Amen. If God Amen. uses you in a mighty way, don't ever get proud. It wasn't you, it was God. Jesus said, it's not even me that does the works. It's my Father, he doeth the works. Yes. Jesus didn't even, the miracles Jesus did, it wasn't him. 
He got direction from Father God. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost of power. He went about doing everything God directed him to do. And then God did the work. He was working with him just like he does with us. The Holy Ghost was. And God was performing the work. Hallelujah. I mean, when people responded by faith, just healing virtue flowed out of Jesus automatically. It's the same now. If we respond by faith, the healing virtue of God that Jesus provided for, it will automatically flow. Hallelujah. If we get in that place. Thank you, Lord. I was seeking the Holy Ghost over here at the campgrounds when I was 12 years old. And uh, I was praying, and, and I kept praying. I've got that in my book, the book on grace. But, but I had to get to the place where I would quit giving and put God on a schedule. I just determined in my heart there was, there was no way I was leaving that place until I received the Holy Ghost. As soon as I got that, that determination, it took me a couple hours to get there. But as soon as I got that determination in my heart, boom, I just received the Holy Ghost just like that. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yes, it is. It was amazing. But what happened, I, I realize now, I had just then gotten into faith. I had just truly got, gotten into true faith where I was determined I was not going to be denied. I was going to be there no matter how long it took. As soon as I was that way, man, I was a place where I could receive from God. Hallelujah. Thank you. We need to get that kind of determination in our lives. We need to do that in every area. Glory to God. So grace, the Lord told me, grace, the way I best, best understand, he, he, he said, consider a gift box, if you will. He said, everything that's already been free provided for you, Jesus made for all provision for us, for everything we need, for life and godliness. Everything provided for you is in that gift box of grace. Notice, Jesus hang on the cross. He said, it is finished. Or his work was done. Okay, so, so what he's done is made all these provisions. They are already available to every person in the world to receive by faith. To receive by faith. And he said, faith is the hand that reaches into that gift box and take those things out. So we actually have to reach in and take out the things that have been provided to us by faith. Now, there are certain graces. That's certain giftings and anointings that are available to those who God chooses. Like it talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And it says that the Holy Spirit gives those out as His will, direct, as under His will. But see, God wants His will is for, for you to move in all His power that you need for any instance. So God can use you in a certain way gift of the Spirit at any time if you're just submitted to the Holy Ghost That's right. and available. God's not trying to hold things back from us. He's trying to get more things through. The Bible says desire spiritual gifts. Amen. We should desire these things. I had a desire. I listened to a message on the, the, the gift of discerning spirits when I was a teenager. It was out here at the campgrounds that some guy was preaching on that and I was a teenager. And I, I just had a desire in my heart to have that gift. And so I told the Lord, I said, God, I would sure like to have that gift. You know, God just gave me that gift. It's operated throughout my life. It's operated at a high level, that gift of discerning of spirits. I can almost always, by the Spirit, tell what kind of spirit a minister is operating under. And I, can, some, I have at times saw spirits. I have at times saw spirits. Demon spirits. And I, I don't have time to tell that right now. I had a demon get on my knee one time. Tom reads his name. But I had, I was, I had this, my knee, I guess I'll tell that one. My knee, I had this shooting pain in my knee for several nights. And I couldn't sleep at night. And I was driving a semi-truck at the time. Well, finally, I, I could go and work all day. But I needed my sleep. I was driving a semi-truck. I needed my sleep at night. And so, so I, I get home and I sit down in my chair this one night. And I had this stabbing pain in my right knee. And, and I looked down there and I saw this demon on my right knee. I saw this old demon. I mean, I could give you, if you had a thing I could give you, you know, the sketch, a clay sketch or something of it. It's just a little old thing. But it had his hands on each side of my knee. And, I, and as soon as I saw it, I said, Kathy. 
I said, what did I say, Kathy? Oh. There's a demon on my knee. Oh, yeah. That's what I said. Kathy, there's a demon on my knee. She thought I was nuts. But I just pointed at that demon. I said, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. And instantly left and instantly the pain left. And the pain was gone. And the, the next night, or later that night, could have been, could have been later that night, I had that exact same pain in my arm. And I wrote, and I didn't see the demon at this time, but I knew it was that same demon. So I commanded, I said, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus, and don't you ever come back. And it left and never did come back. Hallelujah. But that's, I've had other times I've seen demons. And if, you, if a person has a demon, you see, there's infirmities of demons. It means people that have actual physical problems that's caused by a demon that's attached to them. It's not they're demon possessed, but they're being oppressed by a demon. Jesus cast that forth demons of oppression on all kinds of people. They may have been bowed over. They may have been crippled. And it was a demon. He is, if he realized it was a demon, those are the easy people to get healed. All you got to do is you take your authority over the devil. He's got to leave. We were doing a revival at the Assembly of God Church out here uh, a long time ago. It was maybe 30 years ago. And... Uh, and we had some people come up. We, we had the whole front lined up of people to pray for. And I walked up this one woman, and she was there from another church, but she was suffering migraine, terrible migraine headaches. And she, she tears were just running down her face because she was having a migraine headache right then. And so I walked up to her to try to touch her. And suddenly I saw this demon sitting on her shoulder with his hands on each side of her head like that. And I, I, I stepped back and I looked at this demon and his eyes got real wide. And I had to point at this demon. I said, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. And boom, he disappeared. And boom, her head he, he was healed just like that. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, glory. Glory. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> so, so God wants to use us in all these things. Now that was just a grace from God. That was a grace from God. That was freely given to me. I desired that gift. And so God freely gave me that gift. Now, now, that don't mean we can't ask for these gifts. Because if we need them, especially in ministry, I have a good friend's name is Don Burke. And I, I told him about this gift of discerning spirits. And, and I'll, I'll, if ministers are ministering, I, I can usually know if it's the Holy Ghost or if it's some, some other kind of spirit in, involved with it. And so, or if there's no spirit. And so... Uh, so I talked to Don Burke about that one day, and he said, well, I don't have that gift. And I said, well, you need to ask God for it. He said, you can ask God for it? I said, why, well, sure, you, can. you need it for the ministry, you know. We need those kind of gifts for our ministry, to do the work of the ministry. So I said, the Bible says, desire spiritual gifts. And the Bible says, God will give us the desires of our hearts. So we can ask for it. If we need a thing, we can ask for it. And God will give it. I mean, God will give it to us. If we need it, He'll give it to us. Most ministers need those kind of gifts. Hallelujah. And so grace is everything that has been freely given to us. And everything that God does freely give to individuals. I'll give you another example. When I was a teenager, I loved to sing. I still love to sing. But I loved to sing, but I could not sing harmony. I would sing with my cousin Tim. And uh, he, was, he was my uncle's son, and uh, he was my cousin. He's, a, he's about a year, year and a half younger than I am. But uh, he could sing harmony, but I could, all, I could not sing harmony. And so I just told the Lord. I said, Lord, it sure would be nice if I could sing harmony. Bam! God just graced me with the ability to sing harmony. Now, ever since then, I can just hear harmony in any song that's playing. I can just hear, it's just a gift of God. I can just hear the harmony. It's God. Hallelujah. So, so if, even if it's some song I've never heard, I can pick up harmony real quick. I can just start hearing that harmony. It's amazing. But that's a gift of God. Those are, those are God's graces that He wants us to have because He needs us to be doing the work of, of the ministry. He needs us to have everything we need to do what He wants us to do. So if we would just humble ourselves before God and seek His face and pray and be humble, 
God will be able to lift us up. God will be able to use us to do mighty things. Hallelujah. I guess that's my message. Praise your Father. And we're going to get a bunch of other words i got to go through. Well, glory. Glory. Praise your Father. Praise your Father. God's good. Yes, He is. You might have a need here tonight. Hallelujah. I hope you got something out of that. You might have a need here tonight. Hallelujah. God's good, isn't he? All yes. the time. Yeah. Yeah. We, we went up by and saw her, Kathy and I did the other day. And uh, she really does. I mean, this this thing, this thing is bad. It's, it's, it's not too my bad. mom and my wife. It's nothing to God. It's nothing to God. That's right. But I'm just saying, well, we need to be standing in the gap for these people. Yes. Father God, I 